Good morning from uh, St Paul's Church, live on the 26th of March. We have lost an hour overnight as we have uh, sprung into spring. So I hope you're well and I hope that loss of an hour has not been detrimental to you in any way. Uh, we have got a service this morning in the church hall. Uh, it's our brunch church because it's the last Sunday of the month. Brunch church service where we just gather around tables and we eat a bit of uh, food and we share interactively as we learn about Jesus and worship him together. And you will be really welcome to come and join us for that at 10.30. Uh, and we are continuing our uh, series, our Lent series called Dust and Glory. And I'm going to be uh, speaking this morning from a little passage in John's Gospel, John 8, 1 to 11. So if you want to look up that story later, feel free. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. So I'm going to read this Bible story to you today because it's relatively short and it gives the whole picture. While Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses, and now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. While they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, sir. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go your way and from now on, do not sin again. I don't know if that story is familiar to you, but um, it has all sorts of elements that we could consider this morning. This story of uh, Jesus being tested by the, the religious leaders bringing in this woman who's alleged to be uh, have been caught in the act of adultery uh, and them suggesting that the law of Moses says she should be stoned. What do you say, Jesus? And he deflects their question and their questioning and then challenges anyone without sin, be free almost to throw the first stone. And the woman at the end, he invites to go away and to sin no more. There are many things that we could consider this morning. Perhaps the barbaric nature of this judgment uh, passed by the religious leaders on this woman. That they were going to stone her to death. And we have to stop and consider that even in today's society in different countries around the world, that would still happen in some places. We could consider the fact that there is no man pre present to give an account of this alleged um, sin and uh, unfaithfulness. It's all about the woman, the woman is as victim. We could talk about the religious leaders and their judgmentalism and the fact these people are supposed to represent God and yet look at how they are speaking. And we have to recognise that that still too happens, not just in faraway countries, but here and now even in the UK, that sense of judgmentalism by religious leaders. We could also talk about Jesus' amazing deflection by just bending down and writing something with his finger on the sand, in the sand. What did he write, we wonder? What did he write? And then his challenge to the religious leaders and the crowd. If you're without sin, you throw the first stone. But the thing I want to focus on uh, this morning is just the very last line of the story where Jesus and the woman are left alone and Jesus says to the woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, sir. 
And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go your way and from now on do not sin again. Now when I hear those words, do not sin again, I kind of think, oh my word, what an enormous challenge that is. Could any of us really say that that was going to happen? Could any of us um, step up to that task, that challenge of thinking, yeah, I'm not going to sin again, ever. And I don't want to misinterpret Jesus' words here, but I wonder if there is more to that little line, go and sin no more, than we read when we first read it, or understand when we first read it. I wonder whether actually Jesus is giving this woman an invitation. And in the theme of our Lent series, the invitation is one uh, to, for her to be able to move from a position of dust to glory. Here she is, perhaps, and we don't know the facts of this situation, but maybe she has been living in some kind of darkness. Maybe she has been living with guilt and shame. Maybe she has been uh, just living in a real state of dispeace. And Jesus is almost saying, okay, as a result of this salvation that I have just offered to you, as a result of you being saved from death, go and sin no more. In other words, why don't you move from that position where you were weighed down with the dust of your life? And come into this position of glory. Move from dust to glory. And in the glory, no forgiveness. Move from the darkness to light. Move from guilt and shame to forgiveness. What a wonderful invitation to step into the abundance of life. And I wonder if that is what Jesus means, whether he offers that same thing to us. Whether sometimes we, we find that we... Uh, how we come face to face with ourselves and as a result of that we are invited into the abundance of life the glory we move from dust to glory we watched a film in our house the other night um, called living and i'm not giving much or any of the plot away because the, what i'm about to say is in the blurb for the film but the film living stars bill nye and uh, that great actor, and he's a civil servant, it's the 1950s, he's very austere, uh, they're all working in a, a very small, tight-knit office, and he's headed towards retirement. And I don't know how far he off he is away from retirement, but towards those later stages, he's diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer. And the way this figure has been portrayed throughout the film so far, you imagine he's just going to wither and die, just shrivel his life away. But instead, he uses that diagnosis as an opportunity to embrace all of life. The rest, the remaining days, he doesn't know how long he's got, but he chooses to enter into fullness of life as a result of being confronted with himself and uh, giving, being given a new opportunity and a fresh start. It was a Kairos moment for the character in the film, and it's a Kairos moment for this woman. The invitation to move from dust to glory. And so I wonder for each of us what it might look like if we are being challenged to go, do you know what? I don't need to live in that place anymore of fear, of guilt, of shame, of dispeace. I want to respond to this invitation from Jesus to live in fullness of life and move more into, from dust into glory. Let me pray as we consider that invitation this week going forward. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your, this story. Thank you most of all for this amazing story, Jesus, and the way you saved that woman. And you invited her to move from dust to glory. And I pray for each of us, where you have saved us, where you desire to save us, that we too would hear that invitation to move from dust to glory and we would respond and move into abundant life, move into freedom, move into uh, peace and move into forgiveness. So even this week, Lord, may we respond positively to that invitation that you place before us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Go well, friends, and have a great week. Take care. Bye.